Medica Nova Wellness Studio. I'm Dr. Angelica Maria Koch with the educational videos about optimal health and the most innovative and holistic approach to your well-being. So today let's take a look how you can heal your hemorrhoids or piles with natural and effective therapeutic tools. Hemorrhoids are a common condition that affects millions of people around the world and over half of the people will develop symptomatic hemorrhoids at some point during their lives. So it's common to wonder how to get rid of hemorrhoids. So enjoy this video. To stay updated with more ongoing videos, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel, share and like it with your friends and family. And don't forget to click that bell as it notifies you every time I upload a new video. And thank you so much for your thumbs ups and likes. So what are hemorrhoids? Well, hemorrhoids are sort of pads or cushions of tissues that are filled with blood vessels and are found at the end of the rectum or inside the anus. And together with a circular muscle called the anal sphincter, hemorrhoids actually control bowel movement. So they have a place and they have a function. But when people say they have hemorrhoids, uh, really what they're talking about is they have enlarged hemorrhoids. And enlarged hemorrhoids are often associated with symptoms like itching, there may be is a mucus discharge involved or bleeding. And bleeding happens when hard stool damages the thin walls of the blood vessels in the hemorrhoids. We have also different types of hemorrhoids and they're classified according to their location and whether they bleed or not. So we have external piles, internal piles, protruding or prolapse piles and blind piles. The external piles are present on the skin around the anus and can be seen or felt from the outside. And the main symptoms of external piles usually include this painful swelling and a hard lump around the anus. And if they get inflamed, the hemorrhoids, and it's more itchy or, you know, the bleeding is involved. With the internal piles, on the other hand, they lie deep inside the rectum and cannot be felt or seen from the outside. And they are mostly painless since there are no pain receptors in the region where they tend to appear. And the only symptom of internal piles is therefore bleeding and on through the anus while straining uh, during motion of the stool. And the protruding or prolapse piles, they're hemorrhoids that get pushed out towards the anus when a strain is applied to pass stool. They look a little bit pinkish, maybe has uh, also moist pads of skin involved. Prolapsed or protruding hemorrhoids tend to hurt since the anus area is dense with pain sensitive nerves. And the typical symptoms therefore is this mucus discharge, itching and of course pain. And last we have blind piles and, and those hemorrhoids they do not bleed and they uh, feel like protruding masses. They come out when you try to evacuate stool at the opening of the anus. And with that we have also different grades of hemorrhoids according to its severity. So the grade one would be slightly enlarged hemorrhoids that cannot be seen from the outside the anus. The grade two then the hemorrhoids start to get bigger, we have enlarged hemorrhoids that may come outside at times um, at the anus and like, you know, particularly during passing stool, but then they also go back by themselves. Whereas in grade three, uh, the hemorrhoids that come out of the anus when passing stool or engaging even in physical activities, they do not go back by themselves. So they can only be pushed back yeah, manually. In grade four, the hemorrhoids, um, they are, they're always on the outside of the anus and can no longer be pushed back inside. A small bit of the anal lining maybe comes down, um, particularly from the lower rectum or out of the anus even, and therefore we see it more as a rectal prolapse. So what are the general symptoms? Well, we have this itchiness, um, bleeding maybe is involved, you find some blood on your toilet paper, um, maybe even sharp-like pains like knife-like pains, uh, fecal leakage, definitely sensitive lumps around the anus, uh, it's accompanied with painful bowel movements, 
Uh, there can be, as I said, this protrusion of skin during bowel movements. It's more in the prolapse state. And in grade 4 hemorrhoids, we also see more, uh, we call it thrombosed hemorrhoids. And this refers to um, an external hemorrhoid that have no blood flow. Uh, because the vein connected to them is actually thrombosed or shows a blood clot. So how long does hemorrhoid last? Well, usually they come and go within a week. It's not a problem. But if you experience symptoms longer than two or three weeks, of course, please contact your healthcare practitioner. And what are the causes? Well, although people assume that any anal pain while using the toilet might be related to hemorrhoids, they actually uh, quite a number of other, we call it anorectal disorders that can cause the symptom of hemorrhoids. For example, diverticulitis, where the left side uh, of your abdomen, we call it the sigmoid colon, is often affected. Um, abscesses, fistulas, fissures in your anus, um, sexually transmitted disease, HIV, as well as sort of even inflammatory ulcers or infections in general. But most of the time it's sedentary lifestyle or being overweight. Um, I would say regular lifting heavy objects, this could be part of it. Aging, absolutely pregnancy weight or giving birth is a big part of here. Hereditary, you know, family history if you have a tendency to hemorrhoids. I mentioned constipation, uh, chronic diarrhea, it's definitely a big trigger here. And also if you t tend to overuse laxatives or enemas they, they can aggravate the anus, spending too long and sitting for too long on the toilet way because it just adds to the straining in general. Dietary factors, if you um, have a low fiber diet, excess use of alcohol as well as too many spices in your diet that can aggravate the hemorrhoids. But also we talk, talk about portal hypertension and that refers to a condition where there is an increase in the blood pressure within the veins of the portal venous system. So the veins coming from the spleen, the stomach, the pancreas as well as the intestines merge into the portal vein which travels through the liver. And if there's a complication or congestion due to which blood cannot flow properly through the liver, then we have sort of a build-up and we call it a high pressure which develops in the portal system. And this pressure can cause the development of large swollen veins in the stomach as well as in the esophagus and for sure in your rectum. So hemorrhoids could be a result of this. So it becomes a little bit more complex. What is the conventional treatment for hemorrhoids? Well, when you go to your doctor, usually there is an examination involved. And if your doctor believes that you do have enlarged hemorrhoids, then he or she will most likely perform a proctoscopy, which it's sort of involves inserting a tube with a light and a lens to examining the membranes lining in the rectum. And then you maybe will be um, advised to course change your diet, right? Fiber supplements, and maybe hemorrhoid creams and medical treatments and it could go into surgery or sclerotherapy, rubber band ligation or even infrared coagulation. So if you're interested in a health consultation either for yourself and your children, contact me at medicanova at health at medicanova.net. Medicanova or New Medicine is my practice for integrated and educational medicine we offer a unique blend of natural and cutting-edge therapeutic tools from homeopathy, aridology, sclerology, systemic herbology, advanced biofeedback, and health and wellness coaching, and so much more. So book your appointment today. So let's move on to our second part of this video, the food for thought, the metaphysical meaning. And as with all of my other videos, I always kindly sort of um, guide you and push you a little bit towards your interior life and beingness. As you know, we have a mind-body connection and an expression of symptoms in your body is usually um, somewhere of an alarm signal that the interior of yourself 
isn't aligned. And that often starts with our mental and emotional aspects um, right there and then. So when you experience chronic hemorrhoids, there's usually a story behind the symptom. Sure, you can suffer from chronic constipation, weight or acute diarrhea, but there is usually a story involved. And so let's explore this a little bit today. I always refer to Shak Martel's references, a brilliant here. And he says, if I'm experiencing pain with having hemorrhoids, it's usually related to stress. And if bleeding is involved, it's related to loss of joy. Hemorrhoids of my peer when I'm having difficulty with my mother. And that's interesting because in the last video which I made about irregular heartbeat, the conflict was about the father. So it may be an unfinished bereavement or the desire to not see her leave. I may have a great need of her, of her opinion, and new conditions have made me feel abandoned by her. Hemorrhoids indicate tension and an inner desire to force elimination as if I was trying to make something come out very strongly and at the same time the action of holding in appears. So you get the idea, right? You want to express something, but then you say, oh, no, 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 I can't really. So you hold in. And this is, this is the expression of the hemorrhoids, right? They come out, they go in, right? And there's pain involved. So the conflict between pushing and holding in creates an imbalance. The veins suggest a situation indicating an emotional conflict between the action of ejecting and pushing out and the action of wanting to hold in and block the emotion inside of oneself. There's therefore a certain inner conflict between my feeling of loss and my notion about love. I call into question my identity and my family affiliation, especially my father here as well, my work and society in general. Other causes are related to hemorrhoids. Maybe there's an intense feeling of guilt or an old tension, poorly or not expressed, which I often prefer to keep for myself and that I'm feeling about a person or a situation that irritates and angers me. My body is sending me an alarm signal. Something in my life needs to be cleared up for I'm very disturbed. Something is trying to erupt like a volcano I'm surely feeling stress and pressure overload about which I feel guilty. I may have deadlines to meet and I find it very hard to let go and to trust. And I may feel compelled to meet my obligations and responsibilities, even if I want to do is to speak and express my needs in order to rectify or adjust certain situations. Do I feel I'm in control or do I have to give in? I must force myself in a foul situation and I can't get free of it. There is a constraint and some resentment that I should rid myself of. I'm only half alive and I want to run away from home. The social pressure is enormous. Furthermore, I am bearing this burden alone. Now, because my pride will demand that I not ask for help from anyone, I may also be experience a feeling of submission of to a person or a situation where I feel diminished, as though I were an asshole. I'm unable to take my place by showing my sensitivity and my creativity, and I yield my place to someone else. I live a lot in obligingness, because even though I try to find my identity and to be different, I also want others to love me. So what would be the positive affirmation here? Once I have found the metaphysical cause of my malaise, I become aware of it and accept this temporary situation, and temporary underlined here, it's not forever, that will allow me to find help to release myself from it. My thoughts and actions are sustained by love. Everything harmonizes in me and the hemorrhoids disappear. I accept to let go and I dare to express what disturbs me. I regain control over my life and I let go of these negative emotions that fed me. I build new foundations where I feel well and free and the feeling of helplessness disappears and I fully 
control my destiny. If you want to explore more about yourself, your wellness vision, what motivates you and how to apply your strengths qualities in achieving the very best of you, then contact Medicanova Wellness Coaching at health at medicanova.net for your three months coaching program. I'm coaching you to be well. So let's move on to our natural treatment. First of all, change your diet, right? Bring in more um, good nutritional food, which softens your stools. So we wanna have a high fiber food diet. Bring in more chia seed, flax seeds. In fact, clinical studies uh, suggest that high fiber diets reduce the risk of persisting symptoms and bleeding by approximately 50%. So that's a lot, so go for it. Absolutely drink plenty of water, right? If you're dehydrated, you tend to have more constipation, heart good stools, and therefore hemorrhoids. Boost your microbiome, the, the good bacteria within your intestines. So you wanna maybe bring in more fermented food, sauerkraut, kefir, kimchi, right? Um, you know, good raw pasteurized yogurt, just good bacteria, which sort of uh, creates a, a microbiome uh, which really benefits the overall well-being of your entire beingness, not just your intestines. And you can, if you don't want to bring in sauerkraut, maybe you want to bring in some uh, probiotics in a supplement form as well as digestive enzymes. Of course, limit your alcohol intake in spicy food. So I live here in New Mexico, in the USA, and uh, every day people eat here chili. Now, if you have hemorrhoids and you eat chili every day, it doesn't matter if it's green or red, your bum will burn. So be careful on that one. Uh, avoid straining too much, you know, during the bowel movement. It's very important here. Um, don't wait too long before going to the toilet. You know, it's, it's a good part here. Uh, prevent constipation. I mentioned that before. Definitely drink plenty of fluids, engage in regular physical activity, and eat your high fiber foods. Then, sit bath. Very nice here. Sit bath involves sitting in warm water, maybe for 10 minutes, twice daily, and that can reduce just the itching by itself. Um, that's a good one here too. Now, let's talk about natural supplements. With all of that, I would bring in some good indicated herbal supplements which help to reduce the size of the hemorrhoids, uh, relieve the pain, you know, stop the bleeding, and so on. So the first one is Butcher's Broom, and it helps reduce swelling and inflammation of the hemorrhoids. It is a low evergreen Eurasian shrub, with flat shoots known as cladots that give the appearance of stiff spine tipped leaves. And that's interesting because in herbology we have the doctrine of signature, which is the signature or the language of nature. And when you have a see sort of stiff spine tipped leaves, that means therefore the pain will be stitching like, maybe knife like as well. So it gives almost a little keynote here. Um, that this plant would help with this particular pain. Also, uh, pycnogenol, it's a compound of natural chemicals. It comes from the bark of the European pine tree. Again, this needle-like signature. And uh, pycnogenol is thought to be an antioxidant that helps protect cells from damage. Horse chestnut is one of my favorites as well. It's a herbal remedy uh, which helps for poor blood flow and swelling. And of course, witch hazel, it's a wonderful skin healing, astringent and antioxidant uh, property uh, herbal remedy. Um, it comes in um, like a gel or a cream, which you apply externally, an ointment, and it sort of soothes um, and cools the inflammation of the hemorrhoids. It reduces the pain as well. I talked about um, sort of high fiber diet and some of you maybe like psyllium husks. It's a natural source of pure fiber that's sold often in powder form and studies suggest that plant fibers like psyllium husk 
can reduce the frequency of bleeding when using the bathroom and help also avoid constipation and straining. So the keynote here is really that you drink plenty of water because if you don't then psyllium husk can actually cause bloatedness and constipation. So let's move on to our third part of this video, homeopathic remedies. The combination of healthy lifestyles, herbal extract tinctures or herbal supplements in capsule form and indicated homeopathic remedies is really the way to go here. This is the ultimate treatment protocol and should give you results. So why choose homeopathy for the treatment of hemorrhoids? Well, conventional treatments for hemorrhoids involves the use of remedies that make the condition more manageable, but doesn't really treat it. So it's more of a band-aid situation in a way that um, the hemorrhoids come back, for example. And I believe that any good treatment protocol should entail a preventative aspect as well. Homeopathy offers comprehensive treatment options that help treat the condition and therefore ease the symptoms of the hemorrhoids. Now, depending on the grade, you write the severity and the symptoms of the piles, different remedies are therefore recommended to decrease the severity of the symptoms and treat the conditions on a long-term basis. And that's the idea. That's a good treatment plan. So, how can you do that? Well, you match the description of the indicated homeopathic remedy with your individual symptomatology, your individual expression of your hemorrhoids, right? For some of you, it may be just the itching which annoys you. For the others, maybe it's the bleeding, right? It's sort of like, choose which symptom really bothers you the most and then match it with the same keynote of a suggested remedy. It's like a matchmaking thing here. And then it will work. Right? Of course, if you have questions, you're not quite sure about how to approach this whole thing, contact me at Medicanova at health at medicanova.net or contact your healthcare practitioner. The suggested remedies are mostly available in your local health food store. Some of them you maybe have to order online, but they're accessible. And here for adults only, I would choose the potency 30, which is the number behind the name. It um, depicts the strengths of the remedy. And as I would say, maybe one tablet morning and evening for 10 days, see how that works. Um, yeah, you maybe just kill them right there and then. So today, I share with you quite a long list of homeopathic remedies because hemorrhoids is not just an easy symptom, it's a bit of a complex situation. And as I said, we want to um, target your healing protocol according to your individual symptoms. So we're going to today divide the remedies in two groups. One is indicated for external piles and the other for internal piles. So for external piles, the first remedy is called aloe socotrina. And it's a remedy used for external piles with the sore and tender pain. We have also sharp and burning pain involved here in the rectum and this constant feeling of this bearing down sensation as if there is something pulling you down. That's the keynote of here. Cold compresses or applications, you know, even with ice, make the pain better. So look out for that. If you have this symptom, think about aloe socotrina. On the other hand, if you have just painful protruding piles that just come out, muriatic acid would be the remedy. This remedy you probably have to order online. Again, we see here intensely painful sore and protruding hemorrhoids which come outside the anus. The hemorrhoids are very swollen and they look bluish. That's the keynote here with muriatic acid. If you see this bluishness, that's the remedy. Uh, pain, of course, is worse on passing stools. It can be stitching pain that gets worse on touch uh, is present. And here, uh, the hemorrhoids get better with warm application or warm washing, sits bath. It's opposite aloe, is more with cold applications, right? So this remedy is used also in cases where there is soreness in the hemorrhoids um, during the menses in females, for example. Then we have hemorrhoids for a burning sensation only. 
and that would be Ritania peruviana. Again, really strong burning sensation after devocation or passing stools. And the person may have to strain to pass stool. And we see this knife-like stitching pains in the anus or the feeling of a sharp splinter of glass in the rectum uh, may be present. And you know, by then people don't want to sit on a chair because it's so painful. And we have the remedies. Isn't that beautiful? Right? And you have pretty much instant relief as well, rather than hobbling around for weeks and weeks. And it's also embarrassing people, you know, feel like they don't want to talk about it. Then if you just have hemorrhoids, which is accompanied with bleeding only, think about Hamamelis virginiana. Uh, often we see profuse bleeding and that can be even um, you maybe feel weak even after the bleeding and there can be soreness at the anus, heart stool and anal itching are other symptoms that of course indicate the need of this remedy. But the keynote here is bleeding. Now if you have hemorrhoids with constipation, the remedy is um, uh, Collinsonia canadensis and uh, the keynote is very clearly hemorrhoids and constipation. And the stool in such cases is very lumpy, dry, it's passed with a lot of strain. And here we see also the sensation of the sharp sticks in the rectum, right? Anal itching, constricted sensation in the anus is part of that. If you only have shooting pain, so not just the glass stitching pains, but shooting pain, really going up in the up in your bum, so to say, it's Aeschylus hippocastanum. Shooting pains where the, the stools are knotty, dry and hard. As well, uh, this remedy is indicated for blind and bleeding piles. Talk about the blind piles, you know, we talked about this is the group where the mass of the, you know, tissues are just protruding out of the anus. Naxvomica is a good remedy here. And uh, here again we have this burning and itching around the anus constant desire to pass stool, but the stool doesn't come out really, sort of a scanty stool. So you have an urge, but you feel like, God, I'm not really finished. Also, the personality would be more a type A personality that would certainly be, you know, be involved more excess alcohol as well as gourmet food. So it's a personality for excess. And then we see hemorrhoids. Now, I talked about hemorrhoids during childbirth or during pregnancy. And here the remedy sepia would be fantastic. To be honest, because of all these hormonal changes, we see a wide uh, uh, range of symptoms from itching to constipation, to bleeding, to sharp pains. All of that is involved with sepia. A great remedy, um, particular hemorrhoids, which develop um, after the delivery of a child. We have another remedy called Kali Carbonica as well. It's more post childbirth as well, but sepia I would choose uh, as my first choice often. And then if you have hemorrhoids or piles in um, connection with anal fistula, it's a whole different story, but here we have a remedy here as well called Cilicia. And uh, the piles tend to produce, again, during the passage of the stool. Stools may be hard, tends to here recede into the rectum. So you push out the stool, but then it recedes. We call it a shy stool often, receding stool. Uh, with that, with the fistula, you maybe even have a foul smelling discharge of pus or serum from the anal fistula, maybe also present silicea as a remedy. And again, I talked about uh, hemorrhoids in combination with chronic diarrhea, that would be often a remedy called Mercurius solubilis. Uh, we also have a remedy uh, for um, hemorrhoids with rectal prolapse, that would be like a podium clavatum. Here we see a lot of bloatedness and flatulence and um, yeah, rectal prolapse comes to mind here as well, as well as just hemorrhoids which come out during urination only or um, hemorrhoids which come out during coughing or sneezing only, that would be lacus mutans. So you see 
the picture is complex and therefore you need a targeted treatment protocol by a healthcare practitioner, your homeopath, or contact my practice Medica Nova. Now for the group of internal piles, often we see the remedy phosphorus here. Here again with the internal piles, I said, you know, we don't have much pain here because um, there aren't many sort of pain receptors in the interior of the rectum, but we see a lot of bleeding. And so phosphorus would be a good remedy here. Maybe we see even excessive exhaustion because of the bleeding, an urgent need to empty the bowels and the rectal tenesmus. Tenesmus means you want to evacuate the bowels quite frequently. We also see large or swollen piles. The remedy here would be causticum. Um, again, the person needs to pass the stool by straining hard in a standing position. And the piles are hard, uh, painful, constant and get worse upon sitting, standing and walking. But again, it's more internal uh, piles related. And then we have uh, piles or hemorrhoids uh, associated with fissures, so anal fissures. And can you imagine, the pain is horrible here. It's like splinter-like pains. Again, we have uh, tearing pains while you try to pass the stool. Um, very, very difficult, very painful. And then if itching is only the only complaint you have with your hemorrhoids, I would choose sulfur, sulfur 30. It's a great remedy here. Again, we see the soreness, this tenderness at the anus along with this hard, knotty stools. There may be weakness after passing stool, definitely excessive rectal pain, but there's this itchiness, this biting sensation at the anus that gets better actually when lying down. Now, um, if you see cracks, right, when the uh, hemorrhoids get so bad that the uh, skin starts to crack and uh, uh, you even have a sort of moist discharge coming out. Um, that would be the remedy carphytis, but that gets too difficult and here you need of course a healthcare practitioner. So I hope that this video packed again with so much information and useful guidelines about how you can heal your hemorrhoids and piles with natural and effective therapeutic tools has put you on another path of healing, right? There is always another way. So if you have any questions about the suggested treatment protocols or homeopathic remedies, contact Medicanova at health at medicanova.net and have a look also at my website medicanova.net at the online academy. Now from March till June, uh, Medicanova Online Academy offers the Health Education Program 2021. So each month I offer a 25% discount on my certified comprehensive home study online courses. And this month for March, it's Thriving with Homeopathy, a practical guide for the whole family and beyond. So if you ever wanted to study homeopathy and how to use these remedies, how to use a first aid kit with 36 remedies, um, this is the course to go for. Right? I will, uh, of course it's an online course, but nevertheless, I will guide and tutor you according to your individual needs and study progress here. And that's my gift to you. So till next time, much love, take care.